Oh my goodness. <coughs> mm. Hello. <laughs> All right, so what is today? Today is March 23rd, a beautiful day here in astrology. This is so funny. I sound like a like a radio host and I'm not mad I'm not mad at it okay (laughs) but today's topic we are talking about freaking Pluto so I've been actually analyzing the chart of today the um yeah the current transits of today the chart of today and (laughs) Of course, today being the 23rd, we are in that Pluto in Aquarius. Oh my goodness, guys. Oh my goodness. So if you haven't heard, you're going to hear it now. So get yourself what a, a cup of something hot. Get some tea, some matcha, some coffee. Get a notepad. Get your food phone maybe I don't know like get stuff to be comfortable because because I'm about to just inform you (laughs) so whether or not you believe in astrology per se and like the magic of the planets and all of those certain things (laughs) one thing that one cannot forget or circumvent or really get past is the fact that the planets and the energies indeed exist with or without your acceptance if that makes sense I just want to prefront it with that I mean we are in the acceptance and knowing that we are indeed on a planet correct Okay, so we're on Earth, and then there is the sun as well. Okay, there's the sun. Oh, and we also see the moon right there. Okay, and it indeed does just go in and out of of phases (laughs) pertaining to where it is in the universe, which we have a universe, right? Like stars, we see the stars and stuff. Yeah. So all of that's there. (laughs) and there's kind of this vision and this view and this perception of this soul in a human body on a planet with their fingers in their ears saying blah 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 I can't hear this or see this this is not real this energy thing is just so silly and I don't believe it or see it (laughs) all the while life moves on (laughs) time moves on the planets move on the energy moves on and just just hits you whether you like it or not it hits you in cycles and um tries to teach you in cycles and you still just sit there in your body in your soul and your unawareness with your ear your hand your fingers in your ear saying blah 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 i don't believe i don't believe in this (laughs) It's just so silly, soul, okay? I used to be one of those, one of those. That's why I can just talk about it and laugh at it. Because it's just, it's, it is laughable. It's laughable what our society has taught us is astrology. Do you know what is just so, so soul crushing as an existence? I mean, they want, I I don't know, you know, like they, whatever, um, it's they don't want us to know that we're something bigger than what we are um something just way massively more important we're more important than we think we are (laughs) it's the thing and the self-knowledge and the self-love and the self existence is really put on the back burner when it comes to society (laughs) and so I really like to point out that individualism and the fact that we all play a role in the continuance of this beautiful energy energies are real we are affected by the planets and there are it's a spectrum of energy just like people we're a spectrum of emotions and all kinds of things and where we are positioned 
the distance and the planets, the houses, the calculation, their calculations of where those planets are in the sky. <laughs> and then there's this this um underlying blueprint of the where the stars were when you were born directly affect where they are now and and if you would open your eyes to a uh, explorative view maybe even read it as as um non-fiction or as fiction and really just not take it so personally as you read it i know that the calculation and everything is personal but maybe when discovering it and reading it you're gonna end up just looking at it as just as an outside view because that is the the view that you have chosen to participate in that is the view that you have said that you want to participate in the outside view of i don't believe in this Okay, so when going forward in your discovery of astrology, maybe try a, an instance where you're not comparing how you actually think to the findings. Uh, really just take an observer's view and say, interesting, interesting, noted, noted, not, oh, that is so not me, or this is so me, or, you know, trying to ascribe such personality and per such self to the very words that are going on because what's going to happen is you're you're not going to resonate with every single thing within your astrology that's just normal i mean i'll get horoscopes that are talking about a past self of mine like like 22 year old me or something i'm like yeah i mean i get how you would read that in my chart but i've actually ascended to levels beyond that but you know noted and thank you it's good to know that i i went through that lesson and i learned that so that's pretty cool to know um so yeah i mean it's not some like doom thing or it's not something that's just saying this is exactly who you are no way uh, try to not explore it in that lens, but in the lens of, of, oh, this is what they think about the type of data that is lined up with their data <laughs> that indeed exists. I mean, astrology is science. Like, it's not some, some, like, the way that we, I can say we, we, the way that we deliver it, it is in this just... <sighs> enlightened spiritual soul empowered way and vessel and that is because when blessed with the awareness and blessed with the the um, rituals and practice that keep you in alignment and in a knowledge of your existence and your consciousness that's just what that's what that type of person creates. <laughs> That's what it creates. Oh my goodness. The awakened, the enlightened, everyone, everyone who, who are aware and conscious, um, their delivery of this monumentalness of oneness and selfness is all... <laughs> Well, not all, but mostly just so much love and light and and soulful, just soulful empathy on on this person's journey. Like I'm getting all like emotional because it's like when you know that your perspective can indeed help somebody like your knowledge and your consciousness of the planet uh, when you're existing in your your power and your your consciousness like that and then committing to raising the the awareness of everyone else around you it's like it's just powerful and very life-changing and and there's just no other way to deliver this so when people look at you as like this overly positive outlet or oh that sounds too good to be true like all of those different um those pushbacks it's just like oh my goodness yes we have so much work to do I know you think you have to work so hard but life really is about just answering to the callings of your soul I promise you you will be led to the highest and best self always 
and adopting that discipline, implementing the action, all three of those will have you just, just on a higher level of your life always, <laughs> always leveling up, my goodness. Wow, so yeah, I was going to talk about Pluto, the age of Aquarius, but I just really had to get that get that out. It's just, I really just hope that you're able to adopt a creative view and outlet and beauty of life and really look at this existence as a playground. You're a soul and a human body on this playground of earth. <laughs> And anytime you're lost in that, just go ahead and dive into nature. Just get out there within minutes. You will feel the oneness of who you are, the humanness of who you are. <laughs> you might even smile and say hi to a neighbor that is walking by when you really usually wouldn't. <laughs> I love that for you. Your awareness, it raises, it just gets so much higher when you're when you're allowed to just be and you're walking one foot after the other, one foot after the other, and soon it just becomes a a an instinct. Just one foot after the other. Now you're thinking, you're thinking, but now there are these two birds in front of you and maybe some butterflies ahead, the leaves flowing in the wind and you're noticing it one by one, every single thing that nature is providing right in your face. Oh, and it's just so hard to focus on those hard thoughts and focus on those things that are oh, just so annoying in the world because right now you just get to be. Oh. <laughs> you just get to be aware this animal in nature mm. it's so delicious and so naturally as human beings when we feel that that light that excitement oh we just want to share it <sighs> we just want to share it with the next soul and with the next soul hey soul you are overthinking so much about that job. What are you doing? Look, look at how happy you can be. Look at how excited you can be about life. Come be excited about life with me. <laughs> and then now that person is lit up and they're taking it home. And maybe they have like five people at home. And those people at home, they're taking it to their friends. And they're taking it to their extended family. And to the grocery store. And to all of these different places, all of these different existences. Just sharing the light to each and every soul. And reminding them of their consciousness. Of their humanness. Of their awareness. You're here. You. You. And you are so special. Each and every one of us are here to do exactly that and to answer to the callings of our lives. It is currently 11 11, and the timestamp was 1333. <laughs> welcome, welcome to the age of Aquarius. it's not about it's not about self anymore it's not about us I mean it's not about just like solely ourselves these years of self mastery for me have been fucking monumental and necessary for this shift today <laughs> my my north node is in first of all the 12th house in Aquarius that being my south node in Leo in the sixth house <laughs> in tandem I am a in human design I am a an ego manifester okay 
I am a dictator <laughs> of my life. I am a, I control. Okay. That's, that's me in a nutshell. I control. And I've had to, during this Saturn detriment, <laughs> but lessons, I've had to, not detriment, but destruction, Saturn destruction. I've had to separate from myself concept I've had to separate from who I thought I was who I thought I was becoming how I thought I was becoming who I thought I could control actually controlling people was I thought I could control my um, my boyfriend because it was my life and I'm like well like this is my life so like let's go but I didn't know that I was doing that um, so I had to learn that I was being a controlling human being, very controlling human being. And many times in my past relation or like, yeah, relationships, like friendships, I'm <laughs> definitely just that, that boss, man. And so I had to humble myself and be like, look, like people are, <laughs> I just had to, um, yeah, <laughs> definitely. So yeah, just a lot of self-work we're talking about uh ego work right here the ego work had to be done and I'm grateful for my relationship that uh mirrored that work that had to be done so if not for that mirror if not for his feedback if not for him telling me I never would have known and that's what's so important people are uh, indifferent about about letting people know like giving people constructive feedback on their on their personality when they're close to you like close if you are a boyfriend live in anything live in friend live in anything you absolutely have the voice and the right to say hey I know that you enjoy to exist on the highest of your existence but it is impeding on my existence over here. Um, they, definitely not. I mean, it's not directed in this beautiful, sexy way. No way. It's definitely in a way of of just however someone reacts when they're kind of cornered or being controlled or um, being told how to live or what to do. <laughs> yeah, so I learned the hard way in that. Um, but I listened. I'm like, okay, okay. I never ever want to do that to anyone. And I don't want to come off that way to anyone. I don't want to be controlling or do that. So I started working on that. And, and then I realized I had to be around more people. So being in my South Node and in my 12th house, I just have a lot to learn about, um, not having, disdain or disrespect on the others in humanity <laughs> um I chuckle because it there's just a lot more to it but um yeah so I've had to learn well being being the type of person that I am like it's just super power I've always been aware of my power and I've always been like on some queen shit in my mind and so in a huge way, I was just looking around like, why aren't you guys keeping up? Like, I don't understand why I'm surrounded by a plethora of people who cannot keep up. Uh, people who are not on the same energetic level as me. It just, I felt just so alone. I'm telling you, just so alone. The thing is, as a 6'2 ego manifester, I fucking thrive alone. So you could never tell me that my life was bad or or that I was isolated or that I was down or anything. I've always had a positive mindset on myself, always love myself. I have my ego and my G center full um, defined, I have no problem being alone. So I never saw me being out of society or kind of in this hermit mode, hermit, like thriving mode. Like I'd be in the background, just making moves and I have no pull or need to tell anybody about it. I have no want or, you know, to tell anyone about it. I just don't, 
have that energetic force within me. And so that's why when I have just such this buildup of content in my phone and I'm like, why don't you share it? And I I finally got to the bottom of it. It's because I just don't energetically, I get nothing out of sharing my stuff. <laughs> I get nothing. Um, but I just know that it must be done. My ego boost is completely from myself after I take the content, um, I edit it or I might edit it and I see it. I'm like, this is so awesome. And I, I, it boosts my ego. Like I am my generator. (laughs) I literally boost my ego and then that's it. That's it for me. That's the end of the process for me. But then I'm just like in the society and I'm like told to share it you know, to help the, help the other consciousness either share their stuff or, um, you know, get some, get some notes for it because my, my, um, type here, I'm also an exemplary human. I am the example of, um, taking care of myself, being in my true authentic self, which I so align with so much. We're talking human design, (laughs) which I so align with so much because I've always been this kind of like just robotic perfection, Venus, seventh house in Virgo. And I'm just looking around like, why can't other people do this? Why aren't people on their their schedules and habits? Why can't they make it to the gym when they say they'll make it to the gym? Why can't they make this money when they can't, when they say they they're going to but they don't what is the issue what's going on like I could not relate to the mass majority of people and so they're created this disdain of like god I just don't want to be around that energy (laughs) but so one of the biggest lessons though is that there are plenty of high energy just awakened souls out there and it just takes some some getting out into the world and exploring and going to the right communities and finding them because guys like I have felt the most community love in my life that I never felt in my life before um at certain events like lightning in a bottle my god and then um just consciousness events Where we are truly just being one together. I did not know that people like me were out there. I'm telling you, I've been on this. um, It's a lifelong thing. (laughs) It's lifelong. I'm not saying I've been like awakened and enlightened my whole life. But I've definitely always been on a very high, high vibration of like, guys, this this ain't shit what we're doing like we're all just acting like like you guys have to understand like I love the the analogy of this is your avatar I used to say that when I was little like this is your avatar um little as in like high school uh this is your avatar you're just showing up and acting like really really observe yourself when you're out in public and then go home and ask yourself if you're the same like that's what I was thinking when I was little and so I committed to always being the exact same person every time everywhere I go no matter what and I got pushed back a lot because people don't just set boundaries number one people don't just say what they think and what's on their mind um people don't not what they think but you know when when I have a standard and I want something to happen and there's a there's an existence and way for it to happen I'm gonna make it happen like no like there's just no way and then people are oh my god I would never customize this experience and I'm like I'm customizing every experience of my life like are you kidding me if this can be changed about it and it's indeed going to serve me then absolutely and I just I'm often in jaw-dropping moments where people are like oh my gosh she did that and I'm like well yeah guy like come on like we're all here in this existence together let's like let's all start let's all begin just getting what we want without harming others of course but I think that's the thing is like I wasn't informing a lot and that's where I would get the pushback because when you're not informing you're not bringing in other people on in on your plans and that's why they'd be flabbergasted or like blown blown away (laughs) human design again oh my gosh are we ever gonna get to Pluto hmm 
<laughs> anyway, back to Pluto. I just really wanted to kind of put forth my little story there because because this is this has been no small feat, my children. <laughs> I'm just kidding, not children. <laughs> It has been no small feat. My sixth house. Uh, Leo South Node has been uh, has been a journey. Okay. Yep. And my Chiron in the fifth house in Cancer. Mm-hmm. It's been a journey. It's been a journey. But I've been I've been staying positive. It's been so great. So now in perfect timing, while Pluto's in Aquarius and I've learned community within my soul, I've learned about community, what community means in my soul. Because growing up, I didn't have it. Um, now I'm able to truly lead in the way that, that my soul feels uh, congruent to. Just 100%. I feel within my soul alignment, stepping out, I can literally walk out of this car to a soul in the park and get just get going on them like bringing light into them and I love making people talk about themselves it's the best because I I get to see their light like what's something exciting that you're working on right now like help them like bring out their creativity I'm telling you like that that stuff lights me up so so I found my purpose and and light rather than kind of being like oh I don't need people to uh to thrive because I just straight up don't but when it comes to to finding where I can get like a a life perp like literally a a jolt of energy (laughs) people energize me and lighting them up and energizes me because in human design again it it um i guess strokes my ego my ego i don't know how else to say that it empowers my ego and i'm an ego manifester the more you ego me the more i manifest for you so let's go <laughs> my god guys god i hate to just compare myself to these fucks but um putin is a manifester and so is fucking hitler and they they had some vengeance okay because our not self this is just a human design it's both guys it's both um when when manifestors are in their not self they're angry angry and so when i was telling you about my my 12th house and i bet both of those guys have 12th house stuff um 12th house people do have a problem integrating within humanity and within a society and that's a lesson that they have to learn throughout life okay and saturn be assistant with that and so throughout life these guys just 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 remember that disdain and that that kind of just annoyance with humanity that i was talking about imagine using that fuel and anger and influence and and powerfulness to inform and initiate people in mass <laughs> in mass based on anger my god it's just a recipe for disaster for sure so that's why like awareness is so important because you know you might become a fucking dictator <laughs> horrible but hey like i just said awareness is everything um so not describing that personally to me I feel like I always have to do that disclaimer because when people hear it's just another it just kills me when people hear this is a very personal um message here very personal memo and everything but when people hear someone say a statement about something they immediately think that that person is is talking about themselves and that they agree or that they're personalized to this statement and gosh I just really want to just push the message out there and let you all know that that's not what that means if I'm saying something about something then it literally is what it is I promise you there's there's mostly never a deeper meaning to what I'm saying unless I'm like laughing at it and I say haha there's more to that 
or I mean, assume that there's more because this is a, a voice memo and I can't say everything, obviously. But truly, man, I don't on a very deep level. I do not take things personally. I don't attach to things. When I talk about things that I take personal, we're we're talking about like 99th percentile. Like think of it that way. 99th percentile of straight up don't give a fuck. I don't care. I don't take things personally and I don't um I just I I'm mainly detached from a lot from a lot of things that happen. Impermanence, that is a life of peace. Things come, they go, they are here and magnifying and amazing and then they flee away. Like time Time creates this cyclical vision of life where you get highs and lows and you get to be in the presence of this thing and maybe you get presence of this person a lot and then it just it's time for the the cycle to go and it's time for just the the cycle to um return back to self and that's why self foundation is so important and that's why I'm so grateful for my foundation of self Um, But yeah, it's just that massive growth level of learning that a lot of people aren't in that foundation of themselves, which is why they immediately assume that if someone is saying something, then they must mean it about themselves. And I'm here to tell you, no, no, we're just stating facts, stating things, stating notions, stating quotes, stating what things are. Okay, and I really need you to understand and cre- and create the logic around words and around the messages because everything is not emotional everything is not tied to a personal experience everything is not tied to an emotional tie okay someone should be able to speak about something without someone thinking that that is their that they're preaching that you know that their t- that their whole soul is tied to it. Let's stop that, please. My God. <laughs> hmm. I just I hate so much to do this to you guys, but I'm I can't get into Pluto right now. I have to go eat. I will record a Pluto later. Maybe a video. I'll do a Pluto video. Okay. And um. I do have to eat, but let me just end this on a little Pluto ho. Just know that Pluto is a, it's a 20 year transit and it is about to, I mean, it's happening. It's today. It's the age of Aquarius. And just remember that it's about community. It's about coming into your consciousness, raising the consciousness around you so that those around you can then again, raise the consciousness. How do you do that? Come to your higher self and your higher power. How do you do that? You meditate you be you become an observer of your life rather than a uh, a victim or a uh, just plugged into something you're you're intentionally living everything you do is intentional and you raise your spirits you do the things that make you happy that make you proud and you go spread that light and you you just watch it all happen and then as a raised consciousness, we can get more done in this world, I promise you. And that's what the age of Aquarius is about the next 20 years of our life, okay? All right, I'll see you on the video. Power in age of Aquarius. <laughs>